Good afternoon and welcome to Prophetic Insights with Lauren and Arjuna Du Ministries. We're so glad you could be with us today. I tell you, we're back. We had, hopefully, each of you had a blessed weekend, fun weekend, had done something exciting, serve the Lord, what have you. And uh, here we are back, starting to rain again in Southern California, little showers. So we thank God for that. All right. I believe we have a good program tonight. The, there's a, <laughs> a word we started last week, and I, I don't know. The Holy Spirit just keeps prompting me to, to kind of ride this, to stay with it. So I think you're in for a treat. Let's pull in Prophetess. Um, we'll be here, Lord willing, all week, each day at 5 o'clock on this, our program, The Prophetic Insights. Tonight, we're with Brother Shannon at 8 o'clock, and um, it, uh, he's live from the um, uh, overseas, so that's going to be exciting to be with Brother Shannon and talk with the people that may call in there. And then, of course, here, uh, as I'm speaking about people talking, we do have our lines. The lines are all available, and um, they're available for your ability to call in. Let me give you that number in case you do want to call in, 646-649-1155. Again, 646-649-1155. Prophetess, uh, are you there? See if she's available to pray us in and give us, a, give us her prophetic insights for the day. Go ahead, prophetess. Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Dew. It is a blessing to be here this evening. Thank God for my husband and the ministry that God has given us. For truly, we do thank our Heavenly Father for blessing us with this ministry because only He could have given it to us. And He brought us out of darkness to a marvelous light that we could do his will. It's always good to say yes to the Lord. It really is. And sometimes if you get frustrated or mad or angry, ask God to forgive you because those are the works of darkness. Those are the works of the enemy trying to separate you from God and his goodness and his love. Always step back and say, God, I I'm sorry. I know they say we're human. We lose it sometimes, but you know what, God, I'm really sorry. Forgive me. And then turn from that situation, that anger. Begin to seek God truly and ask him to show you how to live for his glory. Find programs like this to listen to. Find a good Bible teaching church that's teaching the word of God from the Bible so that you can be strengthened on a daily basis. Get into different types of uh, organizations within the church and find yourself being busy for the glory of God. It is such a blessing to serve the Lord. Uh, Matthew 21, 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall only do this which is done to the fig tree. But also if you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thy cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Have faith in God tonight. Trust him. Believe in his word. Understand who he is. Invite Jesus into your heart if you had not. Invite Jesus back into your heart if you left him. The fold of Christ. Confess your sins. Have faith in God. Not in yourself, but in him. And then you can speak to the mountains. You can speak to those situations. And they have to be cast into the sea. They have to be gone. And whenever you ask in prayer, believe that you shall receive it. You shall receive it because of your faith, because of your love, because of who you are in Christ Jesus. God does not demote us. We demote ourselves because of disobedience. God is an awesome God. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the service tonight. We ask you to intervene. We ask you to give us victory. We ask you to anoint the man of God with their power and your authority, that the words that he speaks from his mouth will be a blessing to those that are listening. Bless our nation and the government and those that are in charge, our president, God. Save them according to your will and your way. For thy will be done, and we will not fear, for thy will is the best will for your children of God, for Jesus is soon to return. We honor you, we praise you, and we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We receive those words, prophetess. And welcome to Sister Dorothy there in the chat room and of MixLR and those of you in blog talk and on the phone line. Welcome all of you. Glad you're there. Um, one of the things we've been talking about, uh, it's actually, I think we started last Wednesday. We're dealing with what's called spiritual warfare and the warfare of the saints. And um, in this warfare of the saints, there's a lot of components and we've been going through them and this will be a little mini series that'll show up in our um, catalog of programs. I think now we have almost 700 programs of teaching God's word right from the word. Um, and this, one of the things in spiritual warfare and in dealing, which I, th I thought really interesting yesterday as I was teaching our men's Sunday school class. And in this class, it happens to have ministers and men, lay, lay, lay men, which are not uh, ordained or anything. So it was a combination of men and elders and ministers who ministers who have been ordained. But it was interesting in teaching and talking, and the Lord would give me questions to ask them as I teach that um, kind of baffled them. And the the whole idea, some of them baffled me when the Lord gave me to think about it. I had to think about it. it. Wasn't something that just was on the tip of my tongue, but I had to think it through. And in this spiritual warfare, there's some things that I think people are rather are baffled by. One of those things is the fact that when temptation comes, when trouble comes, in the old days, when uh, Flip Wilson was living, he made his he made it he got wealthy, I guess, with his uh, Geraldine, and the devil made me do it. And even Christians started saying, the devil made me do it. Well, not so fast, everyone. Because, and, we, and we, we'll teach on this again. We'll probably we'll just keep teaching on this stuff because we're, faith comes by hearing. So we have to just teach it over and over again until we all get it. And we keep getting it and getting it and growing from it. But um, see, the, the, the devil is an influencer and he can influence us with what he puts either in front of us or what we hear, even try to tempt us with even what, what we're, we're thinking in our mind and then we see it and it's like, hmm. Well, look at the scripture that tells us this is a component, again, spiritual warfare that a lot don't really want to look at. But in James, when we go before we get back to our whole structured lesson, the um, first chapter, it says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. So that takes care of that. God is not about tempted, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. <clears throat> because remember, he made the waster. So he knows what he is. And we know that God can't be tempted because when he was here in human form, the devil came to him, Satan came to him on three different occasions. And he defeated 
the enemy by the word, by the words of his mouth, by the word that was written, that is written. And so uh, it just confirms what Jesus did. Then in verse 14, it says, but, so he's taking us from what James, brother Jesus is saying, that God doesn't tempt anybody, but every man, so that's every woman, it's not just the men, but everyone, all of us, are tempted when we're drawn away of our own lusts and enticed. Who's the enticer? The devil. Now, but get the key, get the key when he is drawn away. So he's saying that we that have received him and that have been grounded in him, hopefully, and in a place where we're in a solid position, from that position, we go to that lesser position of being drawn away. How? By our own lust. So there is something in the man, in the woman, that wants to connect with whatever that is that's lower. There is something in them that wants, and so he says, drawn by the own lust. So it's like a magnet. You have, I have in me. Uh, let's just, we'll use that. I have in me to um, use an example, because I really don't like, well, I, kinda like, I love horses, but I don't love horse racing. But let's just use that. So I'm drawn away. Instead of going to church on Sunday, there's a special uh, horse race, and I'm drawn away. And I'm not saying that it's sinful. I'm just saying this is drawing my attention away, and I'm going to see the horses on Sunday instead of going to church. Well, it says by my own lust, so desire to be with where the horses are, and for those folks that gamble, I guess the gamble makes money, or to see the what, what the animals can do, how fast they can go, what have you. And then it says, and entice. Well, how are you enticed? Folks are enticed because those folks that, I guess, I mean, I, I was never a gambler, so I won't look into that, but I suspect there are people who have the ability to gamble and make money. I don't think they always make it all the time, but they do well, so they're they're enticed. It's attractive. Their eyes are wide open. Or let's just use even a more common one, one that even probably is even more, make more sense to some folks, uh, Sunday morning, church time, and uh, it's uh, the football season. My favorite team is playing. And someone has made tickets available to me. And instead of doing like I used to do when I was in a church where you could do whatever you want to do, I'd spend all football season at, at the game. You see, now you go to church. Well, ah, I'm enticed. Well, I, I, I love my team. Some folks love their team more. Some, but for some people, their team is, is, a, is a god. Okay. So they're in love with it, and now they're enticed. Let's think of something the women would like. What, what are women like? I don't know. But something that, that you really want to do, I don't know if it's going to a hair show or going to a nail nail festival, get your nails done, some of the things that women like. But whatever it is that, that is so intriguing, and it just – it. It, it, it you skip a heartbeat <laughs> when you think about it. Maybe it's the, the whatever. So the point is the lust draws them, and then it's not only the lust, but now they're enticed. So it's like you see the ads, incredible ads always come out during the Super Bowl. I don't know if they were this year. I wasn't too impressed with much stuff. But, you know, so – you know that's what you like, but then you see something to entice you. You see a neat ad that says yada yada, play the play the the uh, the lottery. 
You know, I think last week somebody won four hundred million somewhere. So that is enticed. You're enticed because, oh wow, the whole idea that I can can, and you do that in slew of, or instead of serving the Lord. So that's a battle, and uh, what this scripture fits in with in terms of this battle, this spiritual warfare. If we go back to or go into Galatians, we see where it talks about the battle that we have in our bodies and how we fight, our bodies fight us, or we fight it, or there's constantly this turmoil going on. So um, that is, again, another component that some, I think, would prefer, would prefer to leave alone. But we got to add it in there. It's important. Now, we talked about this whole concept of, uh, let me just go through some of these things, just give you the headings at least. We talked about the devil. You know that the devil can only be one place. So very, I doubt if anybody on this, this listening today struggles has had any encounter with the devil uh, per se. You've had an encounter with his demons or his imps or some fallen angel, but it's unlikely that you have really, and, and if you have, well, praise God, you're able to tell us about it and praise God, hopefully you have survived. But remember the devil is limited in what he can do, but his demons, he's got enough demons. Remember a third of the heaven, third of the angels in heaven became demonized, <laughs> became dark, dark angels, what have you. So he's got some help, a lot of help. But I'm telling you, for those of us that have the, the good Lord, and, and we're in good standing with the good Lord, we have more help than what the devil has. Thanks be unto God. So we've dealt with uh, this being a good warfare. It's a good fight. It's a good fight of faith. Uh, we've dealt with the flesh. We've dealt with enemies. And everyone, everybody that we know has enemies. Everybody we know has enemies. And so since we know everybody has enemies, can't get away from it. Can't, you know, pull some folks oh, I, If they don't have enemies, you begin to wonder, are they a goody two-shoe or what are they? Are they just plainly deceived by by whoever? So we got enemies. We have the world. We dealt with that whole spirit of death, and you know that whole thing of death is um, <laughs> oh, if, if someone over the weekend I can't I remember what encounter I was having with somebody in the church, but I was talking about they were in fear, and we cannot allow fear to grip us, nor to control us, nor to direct us. Where there is fear, there more than likely is no faith. You, you, they don't work in tandem. Some things do work in tandem. And matter of fact, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the question that we asked the men yesterday, because it's, 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 it's spiritual warfare. The question was, can a saved person have the fruit of the Spirit in their life and also be challenged and actively possibly pursuing the works of the flesh? It, was a, it wasn't a trick question. It was just a good question to get the brothers thinking. And thank heavens one of the elders gave the scripture that I wanted to hear. All right. So that's something, if you want to dig for that, that would be fun for you to see if you really are a true believer in the God's word. Uh, then we had, like I said, death. And we remember that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And thank God Jesus is going to do that. But until he does, all of us have that facing us unless Jesus comes back. And we're able to be caught away. If we get caught away, 
we get to be part of those who um, can say, oh, death, where is thy victory? No grave, where is thy sting? I may have it backwards. But the point is, we won't die. But the problem or challenge, I don't like the word problem, but the challenge for all of us is we shouldn't be living in fear of death. Because when we as saints die, or when we go to sleep, if you prefer to use that term, we're asleep and we're in the Lord. And when we're absent from this body, we're present with the Lord. So we have a, another advantage. Thank heavens. All right. Um, we talked about the challenges with family and uh, the variants, all of that. Again, that's spiritual warfare. Because if you're saved and you've got a family full of heathens and people that are warlocks and folks that practice uh, all kind of stuff, whether they practice witchcraft or they they still are are allowing the the curses that have been put on the family to still operate in their life. And again, all that creates a challenge when you're trying to walk with the Lord, not even trying, and you are walking with the Lord and you've got family that is buffeting you on every side. Or you have family that says you're not safe. Or you have family that, um, (laughs) <laughs> they're self-righteous and because you don't maybe go to the same church they go to but they go to one of these churches that says the only people that are saved and going to heaven are folks who go to our church well number one anybody that says that kind of nonsense we know they're they're a cult we know that they are in error and uh, but because these people do some of these things so many people get caught up in it. Look at the 900 folks that died with Jim Jones and on and on. We've had all those things. So, hey, test it by the word. If it doesn't line up with what God's word from Genesis to Revelation, then get away from it as quickly as you can. Stay in the word. Now, uh, under the Lord's banner, I think we talked about that. Um, mm-hmm. Psalm 60 with faith and that remember without faith it's impossible to please god so we're all given a measure of faith when we get saved and the key for all of us is to develop that faith to grow in that faith to allow that faith to mature to use it now the people that god's given the gift hey of faith (laughs) That's a piece of cake. But think about it. They may have it easy there. I hate to use the word easy, but that's the most descriptive one. But they could have challenges in other areas of their life. Or somebody that has the gift of healing. But they have other challenges. So on and on. But here with the spiritual warfare, this faith is really important. Because who are we trusting? We're trusting in someone we don't see. You know, hopefully we're talking to him or he's talking to us. We're hearing his voice, his spirit speaking to us. And he's speaking to us, some of us, uh, through his word, Genesis Revelation, and others he's speaking into our spirit person, depending on the uh, our spirituality and our relationship with him. But when he speaks to us, he will, he will never, I believe, speak anything contrary to, to what's in the Bible. He will not speak in contrary. All right. Uh, with steadfastness in the faith. Uh, let's see that we say that. Let me get to that. I didn't tick these off as we went through. First Corinthians 16, 13. Um, watch ye, stand fast in faith. Uh, quit like you like men. Be strong. Yeah, we did. Uh, whom we just steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And I think we read some other. And this one, such a special, uh, Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold, let us, let us, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. 
remember in other places it says that when you, those waver like the sand on the sea, you know, the sea goes up and down. It don't be that way. Now, with earnestness, we, we haven't dealt with this, this scripture. Here we are. This is, uh, and, and I know that this talks about, beloved, uh, when he tells you that, I want to pay attention. When I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, and it should be, we should all be preaching the same thing. We really should be. But that's why there's so many different denominations, because everybody's preaching something different. But the thread that if they're of Jesus and of, uh, and of salvation, the common thread is uh, the... Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, Jesus' life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. That must be in all of those. They must confess him. So, he said, when I gave all this a writing of common salvation, it was needful for me to write you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. This scripture, this verse, I have remember growing up, I think it's one of those, I remember I told you it was several verses, in the word that I used to hear folks get up and they'd preach for an hour or two, just on sometimes one verse. This is one of those verses. And exhorting, you know, encouraging people. It's, it's, it's a, and with uh, situations as they are today, we could do the same thing. I could do the same thing. And, and this is kind of it, this going over this, continuing this, this teaching on the spiritual warfare. This is our fourth day. There's so much. Earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered in the saints. And when they got it in the book of Acts, he said, you shall be witnesses to me. And then he tells us all where we're going to be witnesses. And then at the end of Mark, he tells us how the power is going to be demonstrated. So we have work to do. Even today, there are yet many souls, I believe, to be to be saved. All right, let's go on. Well, now we're add, adding to this now in looking at this warfare of the saints. Um, he says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. And there, you know, we we have this whole sobriety situation. Some folks say somber. But it's like, well, I'm not having any fun. <laughs> this is not all that, you know, breathtaking. Brothers and sisters, it is. If we knew, and we do know what it says, those of us that have read the book of Revelation and the last few chapters. But all of those chapters in Revelation and the promises of what's there and what's to come. Huh. Oh, being sober now is not a big deal in terms of lifestyle and what have you. Because he could come literally, I believe, based on everything that we see in terms of Timing, in terms of this, commitments, what have you. Anytime. Um, and then we shared with you First Peter five eight about the the devil being a roaring lion. Uh, here now, there therefore endure hardness. These are all these um, nice words, nice encouragement, you know. But it's real. Think about those people who cower or who fear or who give up at the first sign of a major struggle or who aren't able to relent, aren't able to stand firm regardless of what or who or when. They, they just stand. And, and when... The script, one script, some that when when you done all two stand stand, we just keep somewhere down inside, you know. And then those who now 
going through. They're in the midst of a trial, a tribulation, um, you know, a test. And it's like, when will this ever end? But he says we must endure hardness as a good soldier. And, you know, the thing that is kind of neat for my wife and I, I think in terms of where we worship, we worship with a lot of ex-military people. And I'd say once they get their mind made up, many of them, to, to go for it, it's nothing moving them. You know, they're going to stand. And so that tenacity is something that we all must have, I believe, need to have to help us when the devil comes with his enticement, what we just said, and when our when our when we get weak and we start to have these lust issues, and I'm not talking about just sex. Somebody lusting for food, can be lusting for uh, for money, can be lusting for a whole lot of stuff. Well, whenever we have get overtaken by that, if we can remember, I got to stand. It's not a time to to let down my guard, but I got to hold on. And he, he's telling Timothy in Second Timothy, now here he's doing a little more exalted. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So in that testimony, he's saying he's standing not so much for himself, but for the rest of the folks. Because remember, some some of us, we're saved and we're living the life, and somebody's watching us. Somebody is observing your behavior. Whether Again, let's go back, whether it be somebody in that family that's giving you help, or a neighbor, or some associate or someone on the job where you are. Somebody's looking at your life. And what they are reading and seeing, hopefully, is Jesus. They should see Jesus in all of us. Because, remember, many of them, um, let's put it, some of them, I'll say it that way, some of them will, will never go to a church until they finally get some kind of conviction. And they go because of something they, they had seen, or they saw, rather, in you, in your life, because you lived the life before them, pays to, and that's why we we are we are peculiar people. You know, we're not like the world. We shouldn't be like the world. Not not in everything. If we're if we're like the world, then where does Jesus come up in all this? Where does our sanctification come up? Where does our uh, justification come up? Where does anything come up so that they can know that you are a true living epistle, read and known of all men, is what it says. But if they see themselves in you, <laughs> there's no reason to come and be a part of your fellowship. Now, this verse, we talked about, I think, a little bit at the beginning is the key verse in terms of overcoming anything. Like the the, the, the famous people who uh, have found the answer, and they say, they want to say, well, I'm going to give you something today, and say, I'm giving you my million-dollar answer. <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to give you in this verse. And it's not my million dollar. I'm just that's using that as a phraseology terminology to get you to get the point of how significant in this spiritual battle, how the components that relate. And this component uh, is in First Corinthians ninth chapter. I read the whole chapter, but get down to, and I would start at verse twenty four. This starts at verse 25, 6, and 7. And here he is using the descriptor for every man. Bottom line, he's, he's back then, they, they had the 
Olympics or what have you. So, you know, Paul saw that and he used this as an example. And he tells them that um, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things, meaning he, you, <laughs> you got to sleep, you got to eat, you got to rest, you got to do all the right things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Because remember, just like the Olympics now, they get that little medallion. They got something back there. Well, they do the Olympics to receive what's called the corruptible crown. But we, you and I, all of us say, folks, we're going to get a crown that's incorruptible. You know, they get a piece of something silver or what have you now, and it, it can rust. But what we are striving for, or should be striving for, uh, will not corrupt. It will not rust. And uh, it's incorruptible. He said, therefore, so I run. So now he's saying, now this is uncertain. So he's saying how he does. He says, I still am in the race. I'm still part of it. And so I fight. And you don't waste his time. Don't waste his breath. Don't beat like the, the uh, I can't remember if it's the baboon or which monkey it is that beats his chest and makes all that noise. Maybe it's King Kong. But the point is he's beating. Don't beat the air and, and just be for show and nothing. But he says, I'm, I take care of this body. He said, but I keep my body under, change it. See, there are a lot of folks that have a show. I was, we were at a program on yesterday and they had the uh, two greatest fighters ever. Uh, one was Jack Johnson over a hundred years ago. And then the one that, just passed away, I think last year was Muhammad Ali. And he used to be just, you know, he'd do all this moving around, beating the air and like he's doing stuff. But that became his signature, signature moves. Well, there are a lot of folks that are beating the air when it comes to beating up on the devil. And and listen, you, you really can't beat up on the devil, but that's phraseology. But, you know, instead of uh, defeating the devil, they defeat themselves. So he says, I makes it personal. And we want to make this personal like the spiritual warfare that you are in, it's about you. Each one of you that's listening. Not concerned about your your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, your grandson, your great grand your grandson, granddaughter great-grandson, great-granddaughter, and all and all and on, you know. But it's about you. So he says, I, I, I keep my body under. I take command of my personal situation. I'm in charge of my destiny. And we are. Because the God we serve has given us the principle of choice. And so if we're going through, we might as well go through and be the victor, as well as going through for some folks and always, oh, I wish I could have. Oh, if I could have made it. If I could have just one more day. And, and on and on, these sad, sad songs, sad stories. Because I keep my body under and bring it in its objection. So his spirit is in charge the soul the flesh is not see the flesh wants whatever it wants whether it be according to the word or not if the flesh wants it it wants it uh, irrespective of what's right or wrong and many times our flesh will override our spirit and our soul and get exactly what it wants. But he says, I keep my body under. I bring in this objection, less said by any means. Now he's taking it to another level. He's done all this preaching, all this teaching. Or put it another way, I've said I'm saved. I've said I'm going to church and I'm serving the Lord. And less that sometimes I, he's saying, well, hey, I'm doing all this, but I could be deceived and 
get caught up and there I am in the mess. So whether it be a preacher or whether it be a lay person, whoever, you have the ability to take charge of the flesh. Because if you don't, flesh you get to take care of you, take charge of you. Now, one of the things that uh, this is the scripture we taught. I remember us teaching this at Infant Item. I think I'm getting it right. Um, quite a while ago, we were teaching on the Book of Psalm and all the deliverance prayers that are in it. And I remember, and I'm not sure if we were doing it uh, on these programs or some of our programs when we were uh, back, in, way back in Los Angeles. But the point is, this is just a neat prayer. And you can pray it, you can read it. Make a note, go to your Bible and read Psalm 35. And you might want to read the whole thing. Well, we're just going to read just three verses tonight. Because... This prayer is a prayer of David where he's praying for his own safety and his enemy's confusion. I don't know praying for your enemies to be in confusion and the Lord to send confusion into the camp of the devil. You know, you just don't want to pray any kind of witchcraft prayer, you know, stuff like that. But for the enemy... And you know they're an enemy of God as well as an enemy of yours. Shh. It says, plead my cause, O Lord. Psalm 35, Psalm 35 and 1. With them that strive with me. You got them. I got them. Fight against them. There's the them again. That fight against me. It's real. It's happening today and in the land. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. And say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Never get into heavy spiritual warfare, spiritual battles, dealing with the enemies. This is one you pull out. Psalm 37 is another one. Psalms 140, Psalms 109. There's just a number of psalm that you can engage in to deal with the enemy in your prayer. And of course, Ephesians 6:18. Praying always, we've just prayed, you know, verses 10, 11, and 12. But here it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit or Holy Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We talk about supplication, perseverance, not giving up, not taking down. Oh, what a time. You know, and you have to quit when you're about out of time. Praise God. So we're going to end on prayer. Uh, Psalm 35, we talked about that in this uh, Ephesians 6. Very important. Let's see. We have, this is something, all of this. My Lord, it's a lot. Well, Lord, we'll just make sure the Lord wants us to continue. All right, well, Father, let's just see. Prophetess, uh, any comments or words of encouragement you have that Lord's given you to share or anything? All right. The word is really good. Here. I'm enjoying the word about the schedule. Can you hear me? Hello? Hear you. Can you hear, hear me? You. Hear you. Okay. Yes, we hear you just fine. Okay. 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 No, I was just saying that the word is good. And the, no, the more we know about how to fight spiritually, the better overcomers we are. And the word of God has given us plenty ammunition, as they say, to fight the enemy. God bless. All right. Praise God. All righty. Well, let's pray, and uh, we'll be back with you on 
later this evening, Brother Shannon, and then back tomorrow. Father, we thank you for the word. He says to arm ourselves likewise, not only in the flesh, but in the spirit. And we, through this word, are arming ourselves in the spirit that we may be able to deal with any encounters or attacks from any source, any place, anything. Pray for each one under the sound of our voice to be strengthened, to be fortified, to be built up in you. Bless them, O oh God, each one to come forth in victory. Bless each one, O oh God, to have uh, a clarity in their purpose, have a clarity in what you have assigned for them now and their future. Bless them, O oh God, to stand firm, to stand fast in the liberty wherewith you have made them free, and to stand firm in your word. We thank you, we bless you, we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, praise God. Be blessed and remember that pain is not for life. Napa know how. The Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. At National University, it's not just a degree in using a strand of hair to find the truth. It's not just a degree in making sure the wrong guy doesn't stay locked up when the DNA doesn't match. It's not just the degree. It's the degree to which you use it. Earn your master's in forensic science with one course per month. Visit nu.edu to learn more about a nonprofit institution where students come first. National University for the greater.